right, baby, we are live from not Los Angeles anymore. <laughs> and thank you for getting the diffuser going. So let's go ahead and get this pause. Um, what we so you take? Are you using this pillow for something? Is there a reason it's there? Yeah. Alright, I was actually thinking we would... Why don't you get everybody caught up on what you've been doing the last day? James, welcome, welcome. Okay, um... I mean, pretty much the same. You wanna... Well, you know, we're almost done with this. Well, yeah. Uh, what'd you say? So pretty much the same. Well, okay, yeah, people. so... Right now I've just been, uh, watching our videos, going over notes. Um, I'm starting to get the hang of it. Um, a lot of it, like I'll try, I'll read over it and then I'll try to do it myself. And the last like three times that I've done that, I, three times, uh, <laughs> three times that I've done that, I've gotten it on my own the first time around. So that's exciting. Or if I haven't, I understand going back over and kind of like, look, uh, like going over my notes and stuff. I can figure out what it was that I did wrong. So that's cool. Um, cause in the back of my mind, I'm like, what if I can't do this? What if I don't understand this? What if I can only get so far? Because I was just reading an article talking about this guy, uh, who's been doing coding just as like a hobby because he likes the challenge and I'm like, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> And he, I wrote down, uh, Godless Monkey bought me a book, um, and I'm reading it right now. I just got done reading the preface, and I'm going to read on, like, how to use it and whatnot. And it sounds really cool, so I'm excited to start using it. And so I wrote down in the book to remind me that, uh, this isn't word for word, but it, it's kind of like in the general idea that, when and if your journey becomes difficult, don't despair because you are you know you're on the right path, the hard one. And so I just kind of, because this is, this is hard. And like Dylan said a couple days ago, like, yeah, it's hard, which is why a lot of people don't do it. And I really want to hit the wall and not be intimidated by it. So... I'm hoping that all of the work that I put towards everything will help me deal with the wall when it really does come. So. Thank you. <laughs> the... Bitcode. <laughs> hey, Bitcode. Um, Mickey D's money. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, I've been doing notes. I've been now reading a book. I've been taking notes. I've been watching our videos. Uh, and I've been working on my portfolio page and so my portfolio page is kind of frustrating the shit out of me right now because I don't know enough to do what I want it to do and so I'm ho I'm trying to catch up on my notes so that I can be able to do what it is that I need to do for my portfolio page um, so yeah I've been kind of avoiding my portfolio page but I try to go back to it so I'll read, I'll look at my notes, I'll do some I'll do some coding on free code camp and then I'll go to my portfolio and I can be kinda like sectioning it off like that because I don't want to procrastinate on my portfolio page because it's something that I know that I need to get done. But it's like I said, it's just frustrating me because I don't know enough uh, yet to get it done. So it's just <sighs> anyways. That's what's been going on. <laughs> well, all that's pretty natural, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Um, with that being said, let's just get started. So don't don't sweat getting stuck. Everybody in here will tell you that they get stuck all the time, myself it's not, included. It's not so much getting stuck. It's kind of like that feeling like, oh, shit. Like, it, I feel like... 
like um, John said here is like going to the gym. I feel like it's like a course, like one of those like uh, what are those triathlons? Things? Yeah, like a triathlon course. Like you just get to the point where your body's just like nope. <laughs> And I was terrified of my brain getting to this point where, oh, yeah, here's a really big fucking wall. Good luck climbing it, you know. And I just, uh, I'm dreading that point. So, yeah. And I feel it like I got little hurdles right now. I'm just terrified of the big hurdle coming because God knows I, I know it's coming. Because I'm looking at this JavaScript and I'm like, the moment I have to start coding JavaScript, I'm just going to be, like, in pain. So... <laughs> I'm just, I'm hoping that my basics will kind of, I'm hoping that I have built my basics well enough that I'll be able to slowly climb my big hurdles when they come. So I guess it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So yeah, and but again with the guy that I was quoting earlier um, saying that if it's not hard, if it's hard, then at least you know you're on the right path. <sighs> That's just kind of some kind of weird reassurance for me. <laughs> it's like, at least I know I'm going in the right direction because it's really fucking hard. <laughs> all right, with that being said, because we could all be here all day talking about how much, how hard this is, uh, let's, let's jump into today's lesson. Um, so last time we were struggling on this, um, where we were, I, I reset our code. We're going to start fresh, um, where we wanted to check if a name is actually a context first name and the given prop is, is there and the given prop. So check if name is an actual context first name. So. We have to iterate through all these, right? Remember what we do that with a for loop? Mm -hmm. I is less than. Okay, well, hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to check. What, what we want to do is see if the name, which in this case would be Akira, we want to check to see if first name exists. Okay. Um, so the way that we can do that so is you start from we, we, we have to check all the values. I right? thought you had to start from contacts. Uh, no. We do a for loop and we say for the length, remember, contacts is array. Oh, okay, okay. That's what it was. I plus plus. All right. Check if name is actual contacts first name. And so what we want to do is we'll do an if statement here that says if contacts and we pass in our current uh, item that we're iterating on. This has been doing this today. I need a new monitor or, some, or a new cord. Uh, dot, or we can do it like this. We know the name of the property, right? First name. Is equal, equal, equals to the name property. So, Sorry I'm guys. To recall it's all right. The equal equal. My my monitor is bugging out a little bit, guys. One second. It's because the connection from it's just flopping because it's not a good connection. Yeah, I gotta get a better monitor. Um, all right, I have to get a new cord or something for it. It's a new cord. You need a new cord. Cool. Okay, so. Here it is better if it's written with dot notation. Okay, so they want us to use dot notation. No big deal. So we're saying, look, does this first name? We're going to iterate through each one of these indexes, and we're checking does first name equal the value we're passing in Akira. The first one would hit yes, but if it didn't, we'd move on to the next one. And so. Does that exist? That's what we're doing. For, and we're checking every value. So we have to iterate through the whole array. Um, next, what we want to do is, and the given prop is a property of that contact. So if this is true, if that name exists, we have now found where this exists. And so we want to say, 
and the given prop likes. So Christian last name should have returned Voss. And so then we want to do another if statement that all it's checking is does that prop exist? And we can just do another if statement here. Contacts. Thank you. Not concat. Oh my god, contacts. I, I did concat. We fucked this all up. Contacts. Contacts. And then we'll do another nested if statement that says if. Yeah, what the hell was I doing here, huh? <laughs> contacts. And we're saying if that prop exists, all we want to do is return the prop. Okay. What's so I stand for again? The, remember the variable we're setting, which is I, the iterator. I is short for iterator. Okay, what does iterator mean? Um, each time you go through something, it's an iteration. So when we go our first loop, Okay, That'd be so an iteration error. zero. The, yeah. And so this. Uh, in contact, when we pass contact zero, that'd be the first one. And then we run that loop. Dot yeah. length, so the whole of it, the whole of the object. That's how many times we run it, the length of the object, of the array. Okay. So if there's four items in the array, the length of it is four. Four. Or, yeah, four. And so you'd run the loop four times. Okay. But, so while this statement is true, run the loop. And then every loop, increase the iterator by one in this case. Okay, where's the loop? The, the for loop. For is for for loop. Why? What do you mean why? <laughs> why is it called for loop? I, that's what it's called. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing for everything. It's not like something unique for each iteration run this code oh, for loop, I like it all right <laughs> all right and so what this if statement here is so saying, this statement is the loop yes this is kicking off the loop and everything that's being looped is within in, in the okay okay I get it bitcode says hey d I guess that's me uh, <laughs> I'm finishing up digital marketing with Seth Himes and come to learn that doing AdWords at a high level takes knowledge of JavaScript. I have to know that doesn't surprise me to know that because of how well digital marketers can get paid. That there's a lot of technical knowledge when C when messing with SEO and AdWords. So I'm glad to see that he went into that detail with the course, which is why so many people are signing up for it and having good results. I would imagine. Um, it's a great skill. It's the number one skill, I would say, outside of coding that you could teach yourself and earn a good living with, which is uh, when, I, when I saw that you were taking the course, I was really happy to see that because it is a good course and they, people are getting jobs left and right. Um, and there's a lot of jobs in that field. When I go to look up like web intern, half of them are that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So afternoon, Heke, Heketov. No, no rock. No, no rock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here, what we want to do is have an if statement that says the function check if name is actual context first name and the given prop is the property of the contact. If both are true, then return the value of that property. All right. Let's try running this. So this should work for some things. <laughs> Not work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was just like <laughs> Alright, so here we're gonna debug because I think I, I think I had the same exact logic last time and I misunderstood why my logic wasn't working then also. So what we're gonna do Hey, don't be scratching things. Who's scratching? Do you guys here real quick, I'll show you this is how it is in my office here. So you guys can see what's going on. We got we got Tito right here. We have Achilles right there, and then Milo right here. And they're just like hanging out, man. They're just like, hey, everyone, I know we have a two bedroom, two baths with a living room and a dining area and shit, but let's all just hang out together in the tiniest room in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cats, man. All right, uh, oops. 
little insight into our cat life. Each of them is like, like three of them is another person. So it's like having three people on here. And sometimes when the when the cats are really in the mood, each one feels like its own person, like a full individual in the room because they won't budge. Like you can't like walk through them because they won't move, you know? <laughs> it's like you have to shove them out of the way sometimes. <laughs> Just like, get out. <laughs> Do I work from home? Not usually. I will be working a few days from home this coming week, though. Okay, cool. So what we're doing right now is more debugging. We're trying to find out where there's an error in my logic. And so I want to make sure that this is right. So we're getting the first name, as we thought. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that we can do is we can console. So we're only getting first names. We're not getting last, last names. Right now, no. Uh, we just care about first name. Right. But that's what they're saying. That's they're saying that you should get the last name. Uh, should Harry? No, they're they're all passing in the first name. That's all. Um. But in this case, we're getting uh, Christian, and then they're asking for last name. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to pass in contacts. I. We're going to check our our next logic. And then we're passing prop. Check piece by piece. So cool. So this is working as well. Or wait a second. Let's go ahead and uh, clear that real quick. We'll try that one more time. What the fuck is this? This seems to be the user object of free code camp. Interesting. Oh no, it's in here. So here we're returning likes. Each one of these returns something. So this is actually working as well. But it's not returning what it should. It right here I don't understand your logic all right let me show you it's saying it should return boss none of that is returning what it should be so we're getting the prop okay. in this case likes so this first one Akira and likes would be pizza coding and brownie points so it is returning and the other values are being returned as well everything that's getting in here is part of those a, a unit test to make sure that our code is running properly. So somewhere in our code, this isn't running properly. So what we have to do is we'll just go piece by piece and see where our logic is broken. Um, so let's run this. And you see we still are hitting some of these values. And I say, OK, cool. And then that makes sense. And let's run this. That's making sense. So, the question, oh, so the logic is right here. We made a mistake. I don't want to actually return prop. What I want to return is this whole contacts here. So, um, remember this value that we're checking. And so we'll do an else statement, else to return. No such property. And that should return some of it. We're going to have one more. OK. So what happened here was that we were returning the parameter. What we actually wanted to return, this if statement checks if it exists, right? So the prop in this case is likes for the first one. Does likes exist? That's what this if statement's asking. Because if we throw that in here and it doesn't exist, it's going to return false. If it does exist, it returns true. OK. And we're saying, if it does exist, go ahead and return, our, return that information. 
uh, I made a mistake by just throwing prop in here and not thinking. So that's why we got these other tests passed. If it doesn't exist, we want to say no such property. Remember, using the if we else. We also have to do another one where it says no such contact. Mm -hmm. And so this one's going to take me a second to think how they want to send So, calling the first name gives you the last name. I don't no. see how you checked off the first one. Christine, last so, name. So these tests, the, these tests are running in the background. It's as if we're calling it here. So what we're saying is, hey, find out if this person exists. The very first parameter we're passing in is always going to be the first name. Okay. So that's why we can hard code, hey, check to see if that first name exists. And so we're saying the first name property based on each index, if it's equal to that name, we've found the person we're looking for, if that name exists. Then how come the first thing over here on the checklist should return boss? How did it return boss? Well, the, all right, so then it passes in the parameter that they want to return. So in their case, we're checking, hey, check the first name. And the second one is, hey, for whichever parameter we want, in this case, the first, in our example here, it's likes. In this example here, it's last name, return that. I want the last name, or I want the phone number, or I want the likes. So it's just asking you to see if your logic works. It's not actually testing that statement right there. Uh, this one, it's testing, these are all tests that are running in the background. Okay. Uh, use cases would be what it is. And so... So if it's saying that if I give Christine and last name, it should return Voss. And you because yep. your logic works, it does. Yes. Okay. So you're, we're writing our code in such a fashion that based off our if statements, our else statements, and our for loop, it's going to return all that. Right now, it doesn't work for this one, which in this case, Bob number... Uh, since there is no Bob here, see there's no Bob first name, mm -hmm. it's it's not returning uh, no such contact. It's just not returning anything. Now, one thing we could do is put a return statement here that says no. Why there? So the reason we would put it here is because there will only be one return statement in a function that once you hit a return statement, you're done. Okay. So if we're going to hit this for loop first, right? Because if you go top to bottom. So if first it's going to check if a name exists. So if, if it never finds a name that exists. I got it, for loop, I get it. So once it goes through the for loop. Yeah, once, once it doesn't ever return anything in the for loop. With, which is in its own score scope scope yeah the, within its scope here the code that's running in the for loop if it doesn't ever hit this return or that return this first statement is hey we found the first name and we found the property value return that property value the the second one is hey we found the first name but that property doesn't exist so return no such property right and the third one we're doing right now is, hey, that guy doesn't exist. Return no such contact. So that's why you're putting it there. Yes. That was exhausting. <laughs> that's coding. So we're putting it all together there based off the requirements that we have. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so now we're going to be talking about some other math libraries. So there's certain things that you can use, uh, such as math.random. Say you need to generate a random number, you could do that using the math.random library, or math library, and the function would be math.random. Hmm. And what that will do is it'll generate a number between zero and one. And then we can multiply and, and all that sort of stuff to get it to what we want it to be. That's a random from zero to one. Decimal, all the decimals in between, indefinite decimals. Okay. So 
Um, random numbers are really useful. We use that all, for a lot of things. So we want to, instead of it returning zero. What kinds of things? Um, say we wanted to make a heads or tails. We could generate a random number between 0.5 and below and 0.5 and above. Um, say we were making a game and we were going to auto place pieces onto a board to start. We use it for a lot of different things. Um, computer AI in a game, stuff like that. So here, if we wanted to generate a, a random number, we could do math.random. And this would return a number as a decimal uh, between 0 and 1. And I believe if we probably opened up the console, they probably have some examples in here. Maybe they don't. But that would return a random number between 0 and 1. We'll dive into that a little bit more. But let's say we wanted to return a, but that decimal is going to be long. It's going to be like 0 0.3245678, something like that. Um, but say we wanted a whole number, right? Because those decimals may not work for us and what we're trying to do. So instead, we can return a whole number, which in this case, uh, their example here, math.random times 20 would return that long decimal, but times 20. So it'd be between, potentially between 0 and 20. Now, the problem with that is sometimes you just want a number uh, between whole numbers. So what we can do instead is use this math.floor library to contain it. And what that does is it brings it down to the, uh, the um, whole number level. So it's going to get rid of all the other decimal places. But also keep in mind that sometimes you, with math.flourish, maybe you want two decimal places and you could pass that in for that as well. But for right now, uh, let's not, not worry about that. So if we wanted to have the number, if we wanted to go between um, 0 and 9, how would we, what would we do for math.random? Well, remember it's between math.random generates a number between 0 and 1. So the first thing we do is multiply it by 10 to get a number between 0 and 9. Okay. So if you multiply, depending on where it's at, if it's 0.5 times 10, it's going to be 5. So what are they asking? To generate a number between 0 and 9 using the math library. So the math library is just more JavaScript stuff that's pre-built into the language for you to use. Okay. And so far, math.random generates a number between 0 and 1 with various decimal places. And if we wanted to, instead of go 0 to 1, we wanted to go 1 to 10. We would multiply, or zero to, 0 to 9, we would multiply it by 10. And the reason it's 0 to 9 is because we're going to call math.floor, and it's going to drop off the rest of those numbers. So even if it's 0 0.11, it's going to be... Um, zero once we call math.floor because it's going to drop it off at the decimal place and then we're only going to have whole numbers. So math.floor drops off the decimals, math.random generates a number from zero to one and then we just multiply to get it to the numbers that we want. Hmm. Uh, what's going on aim high? So um, let's see what else we got on here. So instead of generating a random number between zero and a given number like we did before, let's generate a random number that falls within a range of two specific numbers. Um, so you can do that as well. So we've been talking about generating between zero and nine. Mm -hmm. Ten different numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, now we're going to say, hey, maybe we want a number between five and ten. We can do that as well. So we're going to create a function called random range, and you can see uh, how we do this right here. Um, we're going to, instead of returning 0, we're going to generate our random number. Or at first, we, we want it to be a whole number. So we'll do math.floor, and we know everything's going to be called within that function. 
Math.random, because we want it to be random. Good. Uh, and math.random generates a number between 0 and 1. Or 5 and 15, so our math. So the first thing we want to do is oh, take... Oh, 0 and 1. Okay, so you're giving it... So you can give the values of where the numbers need to start. Okay. Exactly. So, and the way that we do that is it's going to be our max number minus our min number plus one. And then finally, we're going to add our min number on the end. And this is just a, a standard function. And if we were to work this out, if you actually wrote out the math to find this, let's just think about this for a second. So let's say our max is 15. Okay. And we minus the min. So that's 10. And then we add one that's 11. Right? Why are we adding one? Uh, to make the math work, basically. Okay. Um, Oops, I forgot uh, a bracket here. I still have my brackets. All right. So we're taking our max and our min, and we're, this is basically our times number to build the range that we want. That's our times 10. So if you were, if you wanted a number between 5 and 15, if you take the max, 15 minus 5 is 10, add 1, that's 11. And you, so 11 times 0 to 1 is going to return somewhere between... Uh, 0 and 11 right yeah so what you instead you get that number and then you add 4 to it so it's always going to be the minimum value does that make sense and then you get the range that you're trying to if you if you draw it out a little bit it'll make a little bit more sense what did I do here my max my min Yeah, uh, sometimes, Rab, that thing doesn't work too well. I have to go back and, and figure it out. Um, it's broken. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, of things not working too well, did my Nightbot ever go off? Let's see here. I activated this Nightbot. I thought I did. What's a nightbot? Nightbot's like an automated bot that's supposed to be spamming my chat messages every 20 minutes. Let's see here. Oops, I didn't mean to go to that. channel button and you're not by uh, what's the matter? I'm trying to drink more water and the goal is to drink a gallon. I don't think that shit ain't ever happening. I hate drinking water. Ravbot has slain the Nightbot. So a free code camp video just said it'll be using MDN a lot. Uh, is this true? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. Should be a dark night bot. All right, cool. I, I think we got it set up. Uh, we should get our boy night bot in here pretty soon. All right, um, enough of that. MDN is uh, Mozilla. Uh, M if you typed in MDN, you'd see it right now. It's uh, JavaScript documentation, Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, it's kind of a more developer version of W3 Schools. A lot of people who are just getting started uh, don't find it as intuitive. Um, 
But that's really it. Kalkman and Kalkmax is not defined. What the fuck is it talking about? So I'm moving on. You just have to refresh it because you messed up the first time. It could be. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a. Yeah, I was gonna say. Fart. As far as it looks, everything looks in. As far as I could understand, what it should be like. But it's I can't imagine anything else being wrong in there. <laughs> um. So sometimes you may, as you say, you're say you want to turn a string seven into a number seven. You can do that with the parsent function. This is another thing. Um that you can do in JavaScript cool. uh, using parsent and there's a v variety of reasons yes so um, sounds like they tried to mix parsley and mint together parsent int stands for integer parse stands for parsing a string or parsley and mint no <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. So, Wait, say, say what they are again. So, int is short for integer. Okay. And parse is going through a string and and going going through it like parsing it. I guess that's okay. where the parse comes from. Okay. All right. So let's continue on. So use parse in and convert a string. So it converts a string into an integer and returns it. Night thought. Yeah, our night thought. Spamming that. <laughs> so what we want to do is a return statement that parses it into an int. And so we have the string 56. And what we, what we want it to return is the number 56. So we just have to parse it into an integer. So the uh, percent blah 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 uh, parse the string returns an integer. It's second one is for the radix, which just is the base number of the string. The radix can be an integer between two and thirty-six. This is just, um, there's this thing called binary. You don't really need to know it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the truth. Some people tell you I'm wrong, but that's the truth. Is you, sorry, uh, you don't really need to know it. So we're just going to do this real quick. Return, parse, and Coffee and apples is what keeps you alert when coding. Is that the secret, huh? It is. Actually, it's funny that you should say that. My friend in high school, when I was having a hard time studying, he gave me an apple and was like, here, this will help you focus. So I was literally drinking coffee and, like, had an apple in my hand and, like, studying and, like, typing with my other hand. He said it was the chewing factor that, like, helped. Cause I, I I just the tangible apple. Anyways, yeah, okay, I get it. So <laughs> let, let, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of binary. Binary is an outdated thing that like the ones and zeros are binary. Uh, and so uh, if we wanted to break, are you saying the matrix is? <laughs> All right. So the ones and the zeros. Red pill or blue pill? That's what you're saying. So the ones and zeros are binary, and you can parse a binary value by passing in the value that you're checking. That's what a if you're writing like AI? Would you use it then? Because wouldn't an AI use a lot more binary code? I don't know. 
I've never written AI. All right, so uh, then you pass in this two, and it will parse it into the int that it represents. Mm -hmm. That's all you really have to know. Parse is a binary number into an integer. All right. The That's con cool. All right. So now we're gonna learn uh, condition the ternary operator, which can is you do a binary into like uh, instead of an integer. What is integer? Integer is, is what? a whole number. Okay, and that's it. That's all I can turn it into. I can't turn it into a string. Or Not with parse it, no. Oh. Um, Interesting. So uh, now we're going to talk about a ternary statement, which is another way of writing an if-else statement, a shorthand. So um, ter ternary states statements are pretty true. It's it's a simple if-else statement. If it true or false. If there's always a true or there's always a false, and that's it. That's that's where you would use the ternary. So the way that we set it up is like this, where this code can be written in a conditional operator. We want to right here. What do we want to uh, check if they're equal? So we're going to return is a equal. This is our statement. This is like what you would put in there to check. So is a exactly equal to b? If true. This is saying if true, what we want to return is uh, what? Greater. Oh, sure, sure, not. Return true, and then else, false. So this is an if else statement with the return in our case. So we're saying this is our statement saying, hey, is this true? All right, compare this. If the answer, if this is a true statement, return this value or return that value. And it doesn't have to be true or false. It's just this represents the true statement. This represents the false statement. I thought Python was old. Is that new? Python is not. I think you're thinking maybe a PHP. Oh. Um, but uh, she's not bored, incredibly gay. She was studying before we even did this. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, on a scale, uh, you should hear Dylan scales. He's like on a scale of ten to ten. <laughs> I'm like that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> um. All right. So in the previous challenge, you used a single conditional operator. You also chain them together to check for multiple conditions. Uh, so you can also, that was a simple ternary. Now we're doing multiple condition ternaries, which by the way, I haven't done before. So I'm pretty excited to, uh, to see how this is all gonna work. Um, so we're having an if statement, else if and else. So we're gonna write this as a ternary operator. Ternary? Mm -hmm. Remind me, ternary? The thing we just did. I know. Uh, where you have a statement. Yeah. And then the question mark is the okay. true result, and the colon is the false result in that order. So statement, true result, false and result. And we're putting it in that form? Yes, we are. Okay. So we're going to have a true form. Oh, my God. This is how our cat suddenly tells us he's ready to play. He dragged that in from the living room. Hey, Achilles. What's up, buddy? Yeah? <laughs> Alright. Uh, don't worry, buddy. We're almost done. Uh, is there a way to donate without Visa or MasterCard? PayPal is a great way of donating. April on a scale of one. It's not so much that... I don't even think boredom is in the equation. It's more like... What the fuck is going on? <laughs> All right, so here we are going to return if a number is zero. All right, so we want to return, check if a number is positive, negative, zero. So if a number, so we're gonna take our number and we're say, look, this is our statement. If the number is Greater than where's the if zero. This is our this is our statement. This we're writing as a ternary. So if it's greater than zero. So you don't need to put if. 
No, so this is a different way of writing it. This is a shorthand way. This is the, the legit way that the kids would say. So if the number is greater than zero, well, we want it's positive, right? So uh, should re return positive. So in here, the result would be positive. Positive. Um, however, if we wanted to change, right, so that's one result. Now we want to chain it together. So now we're saying if false, and we have a, another statement here, a is equal equal to zero. The answer, if that's a true statement, excuse me, if number is equal equal to zero, we want to return zero. Else, so remember this is our else. And because we added a statement, it's an else if now. And then we're saying if that else if is true, return zero. Uh, else, we want to return the value negative. All right, so what we did right here was write an if statement with an else if and an else in one line. Yeah, it's intense. So we're saying if you start breaking it down piece by piece, it becomes a little bit simpler. So this is, and you start saying, okay, this is our if. Is this a true statement? And then we set an answer for true and false. So we're saying, if that's positive, if that's true, return positive. Uh, then we're saying, for our false statement, so remember, our if statement fails, so we move on to the else if. So for our false statement, we say, all right, that's false, so we move on. I was like, oh, number is equal equal to zero. Is that a true or false statement? If it's true, we return zero. If it's false, we return negative. An equal 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 is... A triple equals is the, uh, the strictly equals operator. So we're checking H. value and type. Value and type. Okay. And we finished, baby. Uh, now we get to move on. That was all ES5, which is the old shit. And now we're moving on to ES6, uh, which is the new shit. Yay. Um, but I would encourage you if for simple if statements to write things as ternary operators. When people look at your code, it'll be much more impressive. Okay. If you For the simple ones. Um, but I think that's a good place to start, so, so we finish that up. Um, Are you going to stop? Yeah, we'll answer questions for a little bit. You uh, said start. Huh? You said start. Did I? Yeah. Okay. But we'll roll with it. <laughs> roll with it. Alright, let's stand up for a second. Hey, stinker. Ooh, got your belly. Careful not to smush the Tito. Yeah, he's like right there. All right, guys, so um, thank you again to BitCode who donated uh, $5 for our 4K uh, goal here. I think we're close to like $90. I know it says 60 there, but we're a little closer than that. Um, are we working on the beta or free Code Camp regular? I am having her in her own time because, mind you, she's redoing everything that I'm going on here. She's doing the regular free code camp, and I am doing the beta because there's more stuff on here for her to learn, and we're covering more topics. Um, so I, I know that uh, you're still just getting uh, started with JavaScript, and so what? What so from us finishing the JavaScript course together? What are your takeaways so far? Like what? It, what is it? What's on your mind? That's pretty much it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it is a different... It's that wall I've been talking about. Well, it, it's, a, it's a different way of thinking, right? Like, you have to kind of reprogram how you see things. And you have to break it down into individual... It's almost like... Um, 
solving a I'm not even I'm not even thinking about like how everything's being used. I'm just trying to remember what the fuck I need to use for what it is that I need cuz like I don't have any libraries memorized in my head like how you're just calling out council log da 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 you like you know all those things to use for the functions that you need. I don't. I have to go back and even if I like vaguely remember it, I can't recall like some of them are pretty similar in my head because I don't have them completely defined. So that's like the whole reason why I want to make uh, vote flashcards is because that'll help me build the library in my head that I need to call on those when I need to start coding for, you know, what they ask you or whatever it is I need for the website that I'm, you know, making at the time. So, I mean, as of right now, nothing really seems hard. Nothing. I don't have any expectations of it. Stop it because of because of that so um and then once i do get that once i do have the letters everything to call on then i'm gonna be like what happens next like what am i what's gonna be my hurdle at that point so yeah so it's it's, it's gonna be have process. you done any code academy courses yes I actually started on Code Academy, and Dylan uh, suggested that I switch over to Free Code Camp, and so I have been. But I, I actually go back to Code Academy and look at some of the stuff I've done so that I can redo it on Free Code Camp because I'll be like, shit, I forgot. But I know I did this here, so I'll go back. So, um, do you like learning how to think like a dev? No. <laughs> If it's hard, think of your life as you go through your day as an if-else statement. Actually, it's funny that you should say that, RAV4, uh, 404, because I dream that. I literally am dreaming of statements. Like, in my head, I'll be going through, like, a... My dreams are, like, really weird. So I was, like, in a Jeep, and then all of a sudden I had to use the restroom. So I was using if <laughs> to get from the jeep in the big desert that i was in to the bathroom at my house and i was just like i don't know how this is gonna work but my brain figured it out so i have faith that my brain knows what's going on and i'm just catching up I i'm ex <laughs> i'm excited for april once she finishes the portfolio section to jump into the uh basic algorithms because that will be um the uh the biggest challenge for her because then she's actually going to have to put it all together on her own uh, so I'm pretty excited about that and that I won't be helping with I'll answer questions I'll give hints and things like that but I don't think we'll be going through that I think more so what may happen is you'll be presenting your solutions yeah so um, bizarre the audiobook I've actually thought about that um, but I just godless monkey just got me a book uh, like a hardcover book so we bought that so I'm gonna go through that and I think in the future uh, on my own and studying and stuff I probably will be listening to a lot of audiobooks about lots of coding because I I take in learning in all areas like I'm pretty equal amongst uh, like everyone has you know their major way of learning like hands-on or um, listening or looking you know everyone has a I actually took a test in my in my college. They have you take that test, and I got super lucky. And all of them, I need all of them to learn at the same capacity that someone can use just one way. So I get the joy of doing ever a little bit of everything to get that one hundred percent. I got it type thing. So uh, audiobooks are definitely on the list to get. Do you like learning? Um, to just fulfill that question, do I like learning how? I don't like it probably just because it's different from what I'm used to, and that's usually following my gut. I'm I like to follow my gut. Uh, Dylan doesn't like following his gut. He likes following logic. So I'm learning how to follow logic, and I'm not happy about it because it took me so long to follow my gut. <laughs> so now I'm <laughs> averting away from that. So we'll see how I feel about that later on. I haven't instructed her to use solo learn yet, but uh What is solo learn? 
It's another coding site that you can actually do on your phone, but it's kind of like quiz oriented, and you can like drag and drop Ooh. things together. I might so, like that. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, check check it out then. Um, I used to teach myself um, in elementary school on like um, spelling and uh, all the basic algebra functions and stuff. So I used to write code to develop tasks for myself uh, that would be randomized and. It sounds kind of like like that, and but it was as a child, anyways. It was really useful, so maybe it'll be useful once again. Ooh, there's university classes. That's cool. That's good to know. Yeah. So in college, I would actually watch other college professors' lectures on the same subject that that I was going to. So like, if I went to an English lit class, I would. Record my professor, watch, rewatch that lecture, and then I would watch either like a Yale or a Brown or someone else's lecture on the same subject. I would watch so many lectures. I love lectures. I learn from lectures, especially if it's like a good lecture and they apply real world like techniques, and they can explain it out. It's, it's a. Uh, it's cool when you find a good lecture because a good lecture will really cover the basis and the simplicity of being able to understand something new. So that's cool. I'll probably start looking into those too, but I, I just want to focus on our videos so that I can get through and start applying it and all that jazz. Well, the, so the solo learn is more syntax oriented. And what I want to do is get you through the syntax part as quick as possible and have you move into building things and solving algorithms because that's going to be how I you feel like I should through. spend more time in the syntax and not like breeze through it because how am I supposed to build anything if I don't have anything to build from that's what the algorithms are for in terms of JavaScript so they're gonna start you off basic and you're gonna have a ton of questions and I'm happy to help and give you hints and stuff and, and basically to remind you that the syntax exists is what's going to happen yeah uh that's how i'm going to help you you're gonna say well how do i check everyone i'll say well remember four loops and how do i yeah, know this is how I sound. This is yeah, nah, nah, nah. you know how you sound so you just did it <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you sound like <laughs> no so <sound> like because <laughs> <laughs> you fucking take that <laughs> Oh, uh, um, but all right, guys. I appreciate you being here for our uh, our tutoring. This is only day twelve. We got eighty eight more of these, baby. And we're done with Java, so well. JavaScript. JavaScript. And so we did the free code and JavaScript course. Now the natural, the natural thing for you to go to is to jump into the algorithms. So if you get kind of bored on your portfolio and you want to challenge yourself jump into the very first algorithm do them in order they get harder as they go so, okay so start like an algorithm is a project so an algorithm let's let me show you real quick uh so i know what an algorithm is but is it like a project that you're referring to or like applying it to my profile it's kind of no it's no it's it's computer logic is your you're you're gonna remember remember those like big things we were doing is one of those um, so like right here, what they want you to write is a function that converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. Oh yeah, there was one that I, that one's closer up on the, on the Java script. Like I skipped it because we hadn't hit it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is something that if you want to jump back between now that we've completed the course and continue doing the course, but if you want to start jumping in here and try and put it together. I encourage you to because this this whole first one to give you an idea these 20 algorithms or so um, are was equivalent what's going on here to basically one of my first programming classes in college and so there it's not going to be easy but that's really what was how did you even do that i don't know but uh, it was impressive <laughs> You almost slid because there's a bunch of moisture over here. Uh, he but did slide. He got his balance. Did you see his tail whip to the side? Right, come here, buddy. Come on, Milo. I know. Um, but I think that I think that'll be very beneficial for you. Um, all right, baby. You wanna? Oh, by the way, guys, join our Facebook group, Co-Tech and Caffeine. 
Uh, the link is in the description as well now, thanks to Nightbot, in the chat somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> it's there as well. Um, and if you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash codenotorials360. Your money goes towards upgrading the channel, uh, better lighting, 4K content, all that great stuff. It's appreciated. Uh, I appreciate you being here, asking questions of April, getting her. I, I, I like the questions because I think it gets uh, her thinking in terms of this stuff and uh, maybe get a different perspective. Um, sometimes she just thinks I'm full of shit all the time. It's, it's good to occasionally have people say, hey, no, that's how I learned also. That's great. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. You wanna... Trust but verify. Trust but verify, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, baby. You want to you wanna say goodbye? Okay. Thanks, everyone. And as always, code long and prosper.